Hi, everyone, and welcome to the third episode of the Greenhouse Ensemble's Quarantine Soiree. I'm your host, Rihanna Ormolino, and we're streaming live here from Michigan. Tonight, we'll be sharing Speed Date by Patrick Vermillion, and it's featuring Petra Denison, Varvara Ilchenko, and Connor Andrew Hall. And I'm happy and excited to share that Joey Rotter is going to be making his directorial debut here with us. Joey joined Greenhouse three years ago when he was acting in one of our 10 minute play soirees. Last year, we had the privilege of being able to present a show that he wrote, Soup or Heroes. Some of you may have seen this, but if you haven't, don't worry, you'll get your chance. If you'd like to support any of the artists that are involved tonight, you can do so in two easy ways. The first is through our Fractured Atlas site, where you can make a tax-deductible donation. And the second, you could simply Venmo us. It's at Greenhouse Ensemble. So for tonight's show, we're going to transport everyone to a time long, long ago. Or actually, it just feels like long, long ago. It's the time before social distancing, a time when you could walk into a cafe that's crowded with people and just sit down and hang out. So here we are in New York City in a coffee shop. And without further ado, here is Speed Date by Patrick Vermillion. Hi, I'm Jim. Hi, uh, to meet you. You too. Okay, everyone. Two minutes on the clock. Ready? Go! Where are you from? Connecticut, Greenwich, but I moved here after I graduated college. That's cool, yeah, I just moved here from Chicago. Wow, really? Yeah. I've always wanted to go to Chicago. It's nice, <laughs> I recommend it. <laughs> I'm still a huge Cubs fan. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Uh, how do you like the city so far? Uh, it's dirty. <laughs> Nelly. Yeah. I like that there's so much going on. You? Mm -hmm. Same. Uh, your favorite book? Moby Dick. <laughs> Why? It's the perfect novel, structurally. And it's just, it's just beautiful. Uh, I couldn't get through it. Oh, that's a shame. What's your favorite? Anything by Faulkner. Oh, Faulkner blows! What? Yeah. He's not. He's only the most important American writer in history. What? That's like a giant middle finger to Toni Morrison. Who? <laughs> Are you being serious? Who's that? Uh, Beloved? Sula, look her up. She's incredible. Yeah, I'll, I'll take your word for it. Um, well, this has been fun, but uh, it's, it's clear we're not compatible. <laughs> hey, that's why we do this, right? Right. Pleasure. Charmed. Weird, it's definitely been two minutes. Maybe we talk too fast? You want a mint? Do I need one? No, there's no offering. Oh, no thanks. <laughs> okay, come on now, people have places to be. So sorry, everyone. Um, there's a problem with the clock, but we are looking to fix it right away. Okay? <laughs> okay. Next person? Well, well, we don't want to get things confused. So, you know, just stay tight in your seat and uh, everyone can use a few extra minutes or two, am I right? Uh, Be right back. Okay. Oh, well. 
Are you watching any good TV shows? Uh, um, I'm from Chicago. What? I just moved here to the city. You said that already. Oh, did, did I? Uh, yeah, you did. What's going on? Um, I only have two minutes of material. Material? Yes. Material, dating conversation. I asked you where you're from, then I say I'm from Chicago, then I, uh, we talk about the city, then I asked you about your favorite book, then I say that it's trash, then I talk about Faulkner and I say how he's so much better than whatever it is that you said, and then if there's time I offer you a mint, and that's it. Oh my God. You've been having the same two minute conversation this entire night? Uh, yes. Past two years, actually. That's so <laughs> lame. Um, what were you gonna do if you ever actually like got a date that was longer than two minutes? I don't know. I never ever actually made it that far. Okay, oh. I'm kind of freaking out. I don't know what to do. Well, listen, dude. It's fine. Just calm down. We can talk about anything. Like, what TV shows are you watching? Um. Uh... I don't know. Really? Anything? A, a movie or something? Um, uh, I'm new here. You really freak me out. Oh, uh, who am I? You're Jim. You just told me two minutes ago. I don't know if I have a personality outside of this moment. What? I don't even know if I'm human. I don't know if I exist when I'm not here. Jesus Christ, uh, someone, anyone. Hey guys, so just sit tight. We're still getting that clock fixed, okay? <laughs> Can you move us or bring over some water or something? This guy's really freaking me out. <clears throat> Sir, are you okay? Oh, hi, I'm Jim, nice to meet you. Oh, <laughs> hi, uh, I'm Carla. Where are you from? Oh, um, I'm from Memphis. That's cool, I just moved here from Chicago. Oh wow, I've heard such great things. <laughs> Stop it! Okay, what's wrong? He just keeps doing the same thing over and over and over again. He's like a robot or something. Sir, maybe I do need to separate you two. Sir, are you okay? Faulkner. What? Faulkner! Okay, I'm gonna, I'll be right back. Okay. What are you? Hmm? I'm Jim. A robot? No, 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 what are you? Robot, zombie, hmm? <laughs> I'm a huge Cubs fan. <laughs> Jesus Christ, stop it. Jesus Christ? Yes, Jesus Christ, from the Bible. No, I couldn't get through it. I like Faulkner. Shut up about Faulkner! <laughs> well, he's only like the most important American writer in history. I don't know where you memorize that because it's not even remotely true. You want a mint? Ah! Hi, I'm Jim. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Jim. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Jim. Where are you from? I'm from Chicago. That's cool. I just moved here from Chicago. I'm also from Chicago. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jim. No, I'm Jim. Nice to meet you. You too. Where are you from? I'm from freaking Chicago. That's cool, I just- yeah, You're from Chicago too, real cool. I, I'm a huge Cubs fan. <laughs> no, I'm Jim, I'm from Chicago, I'm a Cubs fan. I think the city is dirty, but I like it. What's your favorite book? Faulkner is some pretty- Oh, that's cool, not as great as my favorite, Faulkner. He's like the greatest American writer of all time, right? Right?
Right. You want a mint? Yes, for Christ's sake, give me a mint. I've waited my entire life for another man named Jim from Chicago to come into my life, insult my literary taste, and then, and then offer me a mint. Ah, thank God for you, Jim. Thank God for you and your presence on the God for second other. All right, folks. <laughs> So sorry about that. The clock is now fixed and you can now rotate onto your next hot date. Finally, pleasure meeting you. Uh, honey, it's time for you to rotate onto your next person. Hello, hi, are you okay? I think I'm in love. Wonderful work, guys. Thank you so much. Um, I'd like to just take a minute to talk with each of you and kind of share a little bit about what's going on. So Joey, if you can turn your camera on and join us. Hey. <laughs> Everyone. Cool. Congratulations on your directorial debut. <laughs> I was spoiled with these actors. <laughs> Awesome. Um, I guess I just want to ask you guys a question. I mean, I know that the circumstance for this play isn't something that a lot of people are going through right now, especially in New York City. Um, it might be a little bit different in different parts of the country, but in New York City, you know, people are still kind of wearing masks, avoiding each other. There's not as much blind dating, especially speed dating um, going on. It's kind of like an anti-COVID event, I would think. But aside from like the specific circumstances, how do you guys feel that what's happening in the play can relate to like what's happening in society today? Um, I mean, I think it's interesting that Jim's character is like stuck on this loop. And uh, every time he goes on the loop and follows the script, it doesn't, nothing ever changes. He doesn't find the love of his life or it doesn't even make it past the two minutes. So he doesn't expect anything. And we don't really have that world of instant gratification right now. So everything's, everyone's sort of having to change the way that they approach whatever it is that they're looking for. So I think it's about that because as soon as Jim's script is interrupted, then some sort of like magic moment happens for him. Cool. Cool. Anyone else? What about you, Joey? Yeah. Um, I think, uh, I agree with that. I think that something something that we, something Connor and I talked about when we talked about the role is the sort of safety you have in your routine uh, and how this is a person who is being forced to go outside of his routine. And I think early on in COVID, we were like trying to figure out how do we even do life? This isn't, this isn't two weeks. I have to like think about how I'm going to operate for three months, more than three months and, and then beyond. Um, and now I feel like as people start to think about coming back, I mean, we've built new routines and people are like, what am I going to do when I got to cancel plans? Uh, like, and I don't have COVID to blame anymore. Um, <laughs> and I think that in many ways, our routine or our status quo is like this lifeboat for us. It's just like, well, this is, this is what I know. This, this is how I'm going to stay on the boat and I'm going to keep going on this path because everything in the water is terrifying to me. Oh, cool. That's so true about like making the new routine. Um, and how we're all going to have to go off script again once everything opens. Totally. Yeah. Rachel, what do you what do you think? Um, the really the importance of finding a connection, and um, and how vital that is to people as a as a whole, as a race, as a as a human. Humans just need um, that uh, that other person connection. I think. A lot of people didn't really realize that until that was completely cut off. I know I certainly, one of the things that I really love about being in New York is just walking around. Um, and there's just so many different people here. It's incredible. Um, but now, I mean, I barely go outside. I just see my husband. It's um, so this kind of, this, this play in particular, um, the whole thing is about finding that connection. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, great. Um, sorry, I've got a very sunny here in Michigan. <laughs> um, Connor, how about you? What do you think? Uh, I think we take contact for granted. Uh, 
Um, this is a play about connection. Uh, it's a play about <clears throat> finding new versions of yourself through someone else. Um, and that's what life is to me. It's about face-to-face -face connectivity. It's about holding someone's hand. It's about hugging someone. It's about looking them in the eye and uh, experiencing something about myself that otherwise I maybe wouldn't have picked up on. Um, and with online dating, everybody has their opening lines. And if it doesn't work, you know, the conversation's over. You never have to worry about dealing with that person again. But when you're dealing with someone face to face and within the confines of something like speed dating that has rules, that is structured even within its two minutes, you're forced to contend even within that small amount of time with a part of yourself that might make you a little bit uncomfortable. Um, and with COVID, people don't have that quite as often as they did. And it's gonna be a big adjustment when the world opens back up and people have to face other people's ideas of themselves again. So good luck. Drew, we have a lot to look forward to, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys. Your work was beautiful and I'm so happy to have had you here to be part of our quarantine soiree. And thank you to everyone who's been watching and tune in next week. Hello. Really, really fun play next week for you. It's called Sandbox and it will be directed by Sean Walsh. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you.